How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Are you a Tigers fan? Uh, not necessarily. I'm, I'm pretty necessarily. close to the North Carolina line, so. Oh, oh, oh. oh, we're starting off in a rough path here. But anyway, I still love you. Sorry. Go, go ahead. <laughs> um, so, so I caught your show earlier where you were talking about the um, husband and wife relationship that kind of turns into a parent child. Yeah. Um, and some of those things sounded really familiar. Yeah. Um, and my husband and I are recovering from a uh, spat with infidelity um, and trying to rebuild our relationship. Wait a minute. Um, you re- you say, having- say it again. You kind of went out on me. You're recovering from what? Um, some infidelity. Infidelity. On his part or your part? Yes. His part. His part. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of blame. Um, and it's mostly uh, me being critical and um, not understanding. And we're kind of at an impasse at this point um, because we can't really connect. Like, he's not ready to let go of the anger and hurt. Um, but has, he, wait a minute, he's, he's angry and hurt at you? Yes. Because he feels like you're, you're critical? <clears throat> yes. Okay. And what, what does he feel like you're criticizing um, him about? Um, it can be any little thing. Like, like you said, it's like, uh, could you pick your socks up off the floor? Um, you know, could you come home a little earlier in the day? You know, just anything. Yeah. Um, and admittedly, I felt like I have to kind of walk on eggshells to avoid setting him off. Um, but we can, he can almost barely be around me at this point because I feel like every time he looks at me, that's all he sees. Uh, and I have tried to change my behavior. I've apologized a million times, even though I'm very hurt by his response to my behavior and tried to be very forgiving. I, I just don't know what else to do. Okay. Have you guys, have you guys ever been in counseling together? Um, but he usually drops out and he is not willing to participate in that. So he's not willing to go back now at all? No. Okay. Um, then what you might want to try is to sit down with him and say, you know, we've, we've come through a lot and we're still together and I want to be together and I want us to have... I want us to have a great relationship. Um, Right now, it sounds, you know, it feels like it sounds like that you're, you're really upset with me. And I'd like to know kind of how I can make that better. Help me make it better. Tell me, tell me what would make it better. And so what I'm trying to do there. And his response is generally, I don't know. Okay. Um, Well, I've got some time. I can sit here until you do know. Well, what would help you know? What what would help you figure it out? Okay. I would ask him. In other words, here's what you want to do. You want to engage him in helping him solve the problem of you. All right. So ultimately, what we're going to get to here is um, so I, I know one of the things one of the things you feel is you feel like I'm always I'm always criticizing you. Um, I don't want to do that. Tell me, can you tell me a good way? What would be a good way to ask you for something? Ask you for something that I need or ask you to do something? What would be a good way to say that to you where it doesn't feel critical? 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put the onus on him. He's griping about how you're doing it. Well, tell me how to do it better. And sometimes that will break through to where they 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 start to realize, well, then you could just ask me and you go, okay, I, I, I did that, but I'm going to do it again. I'll do it again. And when I do it, tell me if that's what you're talking about. Then that causes them sometimes to go, well, wait a minute, I guess... I guess it is not unreasonable to tell, ask me to move my, throw my shirt in the hamper, you know. But try to engage him in solving the problem and see where that goes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Sometimes um, that critical view is hard to get over to over with, but if you engage him in how he wants to hear it, then he becomes responsible for utilizing it when you're saying it the way that he told you to say it. And that'll that'll break it up okay. at times. Okay, thank you for your, your call. You know, it's back to what we were talking about in the beginning of the show. You know, so many times, um, just our ears, how we hear things are so much part of the problem. And then sometimes people are actually saying things that they're unaware of, of how they're saying it. I mean, sometimes when people feel criticized, they're not making that up. It does sound harsh. Okay. It is said in a, in a not so helpful way, but it brings us back to the principle in any relationship, in any interaction, the first thing we have to do is ask the question, what of this conflict is my part? Because that's hopeful. If we're having a conflict and I can figure out if I, if I have 5% of this, well, I can fix that. See, if it's mine, I got control of it. So if we're asking what's my part in this conflict, if I can find the part that's mine, I can control that. I've immediately made it better by changing my own behavior. You get into a relationship and each person asks the question, first and foremost, what am I doing to contribute to our trouble? If both of them are asking that question, instead of blaming you for our trouble, we've got a partnership and a team that can climb any mountain, forge any sea. Is that the way the song goes? We can get there because we're each looking at what we can control, which is our own behavior. The problem is when we don't look at what we can control, which is our own behavior, and we're always harping on the other, working on our, our own view.